Hi, this is Ken with Village Green, and I wanted to talk with you today about how to set plants in a landscape. There's, there's actually kind of a fine art to this, and I think Hannah does a really good job of showing us how, how to set the plants correctly. So what Hannah is doing here is she is starting the plants, the larger plants, and she's going to put those on the outside edges. One of the hardest things to do is to allow enough room for these plants to grow. And what she's doing right now is uh, a lot of the designs we do now are, are off photos and we drop circles with plant labels. So she's looking at those plant labels and uh, making sure that she's gotten everything at least close to where I had originally designed it. She'll start with that and then as she goes on further, she'll um, She'll go with her own design, but she'll start with mine first and then, then tweak it as she goes along. So the plants she's putting in right now are called Kaleidoscopabilia. And those plants are going to get about two, maybe three feet tall and somewhere around three feet wide, or maybe not quite. Um, and so if you notice, what she's doing is allowing plenty of room for them as she's setting them those to, to fill in to that area. The trick is with when you're installing these plants is it's okay for the same kind of plant to grow in and fill in against each other uh, but what we want to do is to allow enough space from the different types of plants. So uh, the yellow plants are the kaleidoscope, the plants on the back edge that you can see in, in the back of the bed those are called Pringle U. And so what we wanna do is allow enough space that when each of these types of plants get big, bushy and tall, they're not crowding into the other different type of plant. So the Pringle U, we wanna have a gap between those and the Kaleidoscopabilia. Um, and then the feathery plant that, that's down toward the, um, toward the bottom right-hand screen, that, that's called a and Obsession Andina. And so again, if you notice, she's leaving a pretty good gap between that Obsession uh, Nandina and the Kaleidoscope. The Kaleidoscopes can all fill together and create one solid mound. That's okay. But what we don't want to do is, is to have the Kaleidoscopes growing over on top of the Gulf Stream or on top of the, the Pringle Moon. And honestly, that's the, the most common mistake that I see in landscaping, and I've done it myself and come back and looked at, at some plants that I installed a, a few years later and thought, well, doggone it, I thought I'd left enough room. And I, sure enough, I, the, the plants had grown back in on top of each other. We use usually more moderate sized plants uh, as, as we get in toward the center of the house. Uh, and then we like to use taller plants that will frame the entrance. So that's what those Gulf Stream, or I'm sorry, the, the Obsession Andinas are that are on either side of the entrance. But now, usually what we'll do is, as we set these plants, uh, yeah, we'll start it at the left-hand side and work our way across and get the spacing down roughly. And then you can see that she's working back through and she's making very minor changes, but if, what happens usually is you move one plant on the right-hand side and it winds up causing you to move every other plant in the landscape just to get the spacing just exactly right. But it is the most important part of, of the landscape that we do. Well, I hope you found the video with Hannah setting the, the plants in the landscape. I hope you found that helpful. If you do, please send those these videos on to your friends and family. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, sign up for our quick tip emails. I think you'll find those, those useful. This is Ken with Village Green, your neighborhood landscape company.